right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. So now that we have a couple of versions of FSD beta under our belt, we wanted to try to compare them and see which one is truly better than the other by just putting them head to head, putting them back to back and helping you understand where FSD is, whether it's progressing or in areas where it's regressing. We want to be able to see that and visualize that. So we're going to go ahead and go through our normal loop today. But now we're going to compare all the different versions, starting with what we think is one of the best versions, 10.6.1, and then go on from there all the way up to the current one as of this video, which is 10.11. All right, we're not going to waste any time, so let's jump into it right now, starting with 10.6.1. As you can see, it stays inside the main lane, does not go over the edge with the bike lane, and makes the turn very calm and very smoothly, but at a, also a good speed. So also take a look at the mile per hour. So that's a good one. Now let's look at 10.8. Similar situation, but now we're going into the bike lane and then we're making the turn, which makes the turn a little bit more difficult for the car. So it takes a little bit of a step in between, but overall the mile an hour is good. 10.8.1, which was also an overall good one, goes a little bit less into the bike lane, but still makes the turn. A little bit smoother than 10.8. The mile an hour is also good there. And it's an overall confident turn. 10.9 is where things start to get a little bit funky and it goes into the bike lane, makes the turn pretty smoothly a little bit lower on the mile per hour, 10 miles an hour, then speeds up, but still pretty solid. 10.10.2, absolutely the worst one, goes over the bike lane and almost hits this car. I resume it and I just sort of had to disengage for that one. So no good on that one for 10.10.2. 10.11, much better, stays more centered into the lane instead of going over the bike lane, makes the turn pretty herky-jerky and also the mile an hour is very, very low six miles an hour, which is pretty slow and, and doesn't give you the confidence that the car can make this turn successfully. So in our opinion, 10.6.1 was the best in terms of turning, giving you confidence that it knows how to make the turn, makes the turn from the center of the lane and not going over the bike lane, which makes it easier to turn even when cars are present and overall just an overall higher level of confidence in the other builds with the exception of 10.8.1, which we think is the best all around build because it added the regenerative braking, which makes braking a lot more confidence inspiring in addition to the smooth turns. But again, let's just check them out side by side. Let's compare them all to 10.6.1 to see how they fare again side by side. Here you wind up on the wheel that he moves. 10 point, it's sort of trying to get into the bike lane. You see the difference there in the confidence, but very close and very similar in terms of the confidence nature of that turn. 8.1 you see the difference in the confidence as it approaches the turn going into the bike line just makes it more difficult to make the turn because you have to go wide same thing with 10.9 seems a little bit more unsure a little bit more regressive in nature based on the confidence of 10.6.1 all right going into 10.10.2 not even a real competition it's really unsure. I had to actually keep my hand on the wheel, but it's still unsure. Wanted to hit the car, didn't know what to do, and uh, it was just a bad showing. 10.11, much better from 10.10.2. Stays in the lane, doesn't go over the bike lane, makes a confident turn, then sort of goes back to the old behavior of 10.10.2. That's why I say it regresses in an overall slower mile an hour on the turn as well. All right, so what did we learn here? We learned that 10.6.1 is probably the best in terms of turning and confidence. 10.8, 10.9 kind of carried that over while trying to add new features as well. And then it got regressive after that, or it seemed to be regressive for us in that regard. Everyone's gonna be different based on their build. But let's take a look at the rest of the path and see how they fare. We'll just do these ones sequentially so you can see in order how they look and how they feel, how they take sweeping turns and how they take the unprotected left turn. Picking up right where we left off at 10.6.1 for the same trip, takes the turn take a look at the bottom right repeater camera on the side you'll see how close things are overall it takes it pretty confidently look at the mile an hour as well stays at 25 miles an hour doesn't slow down this is the turn that's very challenging for all build but even this one takes it pretty good with no cars coming immediately but there is a car coming up again a little bit close on the curb on the right but overall keeps the mile an hour pretty high which gives me high degrees of confidence that it knows how to take that particular turn Slowing down on 10.6.1 wasn't the best. Uh, they did added the regen braking uh, later in 10.8 and 10.8.1. But so far so good, creeping up slowly in the intersection here. 
waiting for cars to come through. And basically I had to give it a little bit of acceleration to start it up and get it going and give it confidence that it could make it into the actual intersection and go. Once it starts to go, here we go. Goes pretty slow, pretty dangerous here. Needs to speed up and needs to commit to a path. Once it finds its path and once it gets into the lane, then it starts to speed up pretty nicely and pretty good there, but the initial turn was wonky. Now 10.8, again, same, picking up where we left off after that immediate right turn. Takes the turn pretty good, gets a little bit too close to the right. See that right repeater camera? You'll see that a little bit close to the curb for my taste. Stays on the right side of the lane, which is good. Sees the car coming as well, which helps indicate that. Sees the car there. Takes a turn pretty decently, but again, this part is always weird. A little bit more hesitancy than before than 10.6.1, especially with the indecisiveness of the yoke. Comes around here, no problem. And one of the things you'll note here is that the path planner, the blue line, is also going to be an indicator of what the yoke does. If it changes direction, the yoke will change direction. It's sort of showing the mind's eye of the car, if you will. Comes up to the stop sign pretty good. Now with the regen braking, so it's a lot smoother. And then waits its turn. A couple of cars are coming. Proceeding very slowly, four miles an hour, keep an eye on the miles an hour. Five, six, seven, then speeds up and makes the turn, but it makes it kind of wide. So not terrible, but not as smooth again as 10.6.1 was. Okay, 10.8.1, similar concept, takes the turn nicely here. 25 miles an hour is the target here, so it should be staying hovering close to that. Still gets a little bit close to the edge, but not too bad. The snow actually helps create a little bit of a buffer. So that, that benefited 10.8.1 in this particular drive. Stays on the right side of the road as well, sort of extrapolates its own path for where it goes in these undivided, un unmarked lanes. Here it gets a little bit funky. Cars coming, cars are parked. It kind of throws it off, I guess. Otherwise stays good in the lane, doesn't center itself in the lane even though there are no lane markings comes up to the stop sign with that nice smooth regenerative braking waits its turn lots of traffic now so it waits its turn making sure that uh, the coast is clear season opening tries to commit the line is there the path planner is there the yoke is pointed where the path planner is pointed. It's just waiting for its turn. Sees it, and now again, creeps very slow, two miles, three miles, four miles, and then starts to speed up once it gets out there. But it's so far out there that an accident could happen. So again, not the best, but still better than later builds. All right, 10.9. This one takes the turn a little bit wider, closer, to the curb than before. Look at that. Snow is helping it again here, keep its distance from the curb, but if the snow wasn't there, I'm sure it would have been very close to the curb as well. Again, that right repeater camera, that right lower bottom camera on the screen that you see there. Stays on the right side of the lane, which is great. Starts to drift towards the middle a little bit. This is not good. This is a little bit regressive compared to the previous builds. Doesn't know what it wants to do. There are no cars around, no cars coming, no cars parked, and still is indecisive. So that's not good. Smooth regen braking comes to the stop very nicely. It has the right of way, it's not doing anything. Five miles an hour, six miles, a little bit faster and then commits. But again, it slowly goes out into a, an area where that's unprotected that makes it dangerous. All right, 10 point. 10.2, very wide, very close to the edge there, now with no snow to protect it, trying to keep my hand on the wheel as best as possible to avoid any incidents or any unpredictable 
movements that the car might do that it did in 10.10, which we didn't film. The car helped it be a little bit more confident there, so that was decent. It tends to center itself more in 10.10.2 .10 and beyond instead of staying on the right side of the lane or the left side of the lane or whatever lane it needs to be in. It has an opening. It hesitates a little bit. One mile an hour, two mile an hour, four mile an hour, five. Speeds up a little bit and then goes. So not terrible on that turn, at least the second time around. All right, latest and greatest, 10.11. Takes the turn nicely. Didn't have a chance to put the camera up on this one. There it goes. Still kind of close to the edge and still tries to center itself again more than before. See the line that it looks to extrapolate that yellow line. You saw it blip on the screen. That's what it is. It's extrapolating where the divider is. And it's, it's sort of fighting between seeing it, visualizing it versus seeing it actually. And I think that's the problem there. No cars around, so it takes it pretty good. But again, still trying to center in the lane. Look how center the car is to the lane versus being on the right side of the lane. Now it's drifting a little bit to the right to get more aligned to where the limit line is going to be. Comes to the limit line nice and easy. No cars are there. It should just go right now. Seven mile an hour, which is a little bit better on this particular turn. Still wide over the white line on the right. But nonetheless, that's 10.11. All right, so overall, we see that full self-driving beta is getting better in certain areas and again, just regressive in, in other areas. Sharp turns are the cornerstone of city streets. That's what makes city streets over standard autopilot is the ability to make those right and left 90 degree turns. And I think if it can't do that well, it's not going to be confidence inspiring for anything else it has to tackle. Unprotected turns, wide turns, some of the more complicated situations, those can be seen as edge cases because they're not everywhere. But right and left hand sharp turns, they're everywhere. Everywhere it has them. East coast, west coast, north, south, other countries. And we need to be able to nail that. So if, if Tesla can nail those right turns with the level of confidence that 10.6.1 gave us and 10.8 series, I think we'll be fine. And we merge that with some of the newer advances of 10.11 and get away from the code of 10.10.2. I think we're going to be in a good place. So let me know what you thought was the best version or what you think is the best version based on your car or based on the video that we've shown you here. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.